All right, let's take a minute and do that. Because I'm only going to do just this one thing, but I think you'll also enjoy um, kind of seeing how they how they graph that. Right, oh, I'm in I'm in some crazy mode here. I better change this thing to function and enter. And oh, look at that, it's in degree. If it's in degree, I'm definitely going to want to change this thing back to radian. Because remember, your calculator, it goes on a 10 by 10, or excuse me, a 20 by 20 grid. And it's putting real numbers in there. So it'll only do the 20 degrees around the center. So you got to be real careful with that. Okay, so watch this. Let's clear this out. And I'm going to do the mother graph. This is going to be sine of x. And then enter. And then what did we say this was going to be? This is negative 3 sine of, now I'm going to need to use double parentheses on this. It's going to be 2 times x plus pi fourths plus second pi divided by 4. And then i got to end both prends, or the calculator won't know what I'm talking about, and then plus 3. Okay? And then let's mess with our window just a little bit. I'm going to go from... Let's go from negative. Let's go from negative three up to seven. Whoops, that's on my y though. Um, let's go from negative pi to two pi. Um, so from negative pi to two pi to two pi, just so we can see how pretty it is. And then I'm going to go down here and let's go from negative three to seven, just to make it pretty. And let's graph it. Okay, so there's original sign, right? We can see that. And then look at that one. Isn't that cool? Now, let's go back over here for a sec and look at how close we got. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? That's very cool. Now, remember, if you don't believe yourself, you can always trace. Like, if I don't believe that that's pi halves comma six, let's check. I'm going to go to trace. I notice I'm on the wrong function. I don't want to be on sine. So what I do is I toggle up and I get on my other function right there. And I'm simply going to go, oh, look at that. It's already a pi halves comma six. Let's see if I'm truly supposed to be at pi comma zero. So I just go second pi and I hit enter. And sure enough, it's zero. Isn't that cool? How about pi force comma three? Let's check that. Let's see if we were crazy. Because you know me. I can get a little crazy from time to time. So pi force, isn't that what I said? Pi force, and look at that. Wonderful tool. We will do, and a pretty cool looking picture when everything's said and done. It kind of looks like the uh, Opera House in Sydney, doesn't it? Makes me think of Nemo. Um, what a geek. So that's it. We're going to play, we're going to do a bunch of these in class. You'll do them over and over and over again. And then um, we'll, by the time you're done, you will not only have strengthened your understanding of how to do this with sinusoidal function, functions, but also with any function in general, which is so important for calculus, okay? All right, well, um, that's about it for this part. I'm going to kick over to another little part where we put some data in a calculator, and that's going to be it. So thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you later. All right, everybody, now I'm going to show you something really cool. What we're going to do is we're going to take data, and we're going to do something called regression analysis on it, but that's just fancy statistical talk for we're going to take a look at what the data looks like, and then we're going to put a sine function across that using technology. We'll do this by hand in class. Excuse me, but not yet. But right now, I just want you to see how to do it with your calculator. And of course, we can go over this in class as needed. So here's what we're doing. We take the average monthly temperatures in someplace cold, because these are in Fahrenheit, so somewhere up in Alaska, say. Okay, so month one is going to be um, um, January, February, of course. So 12 is December, 6 is June, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to throw these things in. This is a wonderful lesson because it shows you sort of your way around your calculator. So let me show you this. We're going to throw this into a couple of lists, and then we're going to make the calculator do fun things with it. You ready? First things first, I'm going to go to stat. I'm going to edit two lists. we got list one in which this is kind of like Julia Child's cooking. They're already here. I put 1 through 12 in here. So they're all sitting in here waiting for me, okay? And then I put these temperature values over, he over here in list two. Now you may have stuff going on in your list, and you can either move over list. Let me show you how to do that. Like if I go all the way up, if I go all the way up here, notice I'm in list two. If I want to clear the list, I hit clear and then push down, and it'll go away. I'll show you. Like if I'm over here, and I've got nine enter, and wait, I've only got one value in here. I want to clear this list. I hit clear, 
enter, and it's gone. Don't delete the list. If you hit delete, it makes the list go away, and it's kind of a pain in the butt to make new lists. Okay, now we're going to do a few things with this. We're going to look at this in what's called a scatter plot first, and then we're going to have it do a regression analysis on it. So I'm going to walk you through all those steps first. Now, remember, when in doubt, quit out. First thing I'm going to do is I've got some stuff going on here from before. I'm going to clean all this out. I want it gone. Okay? So I'm going to do what's called a scatter plot on this. And the way that I do this is I'm going to go to second stat plot. And notice I've got plot one off, plot two off, plot three off, etc., etc. Notice also that if I hit y equals, I'm back in my graph or home screen. Right. I guess I could just clear those out and notice plot one, plot two, and plot three are not highlighted, which is good. We want those to be to be gone. Let's get rid of those. Okay, so let's go back to second stat plot. And I'm going to tell my calculator by hitting enter. I'm going to tell my calculator A to turn on, because I want to be able to see this. There's the type is a scatter plot. These are this is a time series, this is a histogram, these are modified box and whiskers. Box and whiskers, if you've ha had my stat class, you know what they look like. If you have your data in different lists, you need to change the names of these. Mine are in list one and list two, and those are set by default. But you can change the names, and then you can change your marker. So if you want your marker to be kind of this open circle thing, which I do, that's a good thing. That's how I leave it. And then I can go to plus, or I can go to this dot. The dots are hard to see, especially if they land on lattice points. All right, so I'm going to leave it just as it is. Now, I'm going to do a little, I'm going to get crafty here. I'm going to use a zoom, and then it's faster to go up. I'm going to go to zoom. I want to go, wow, this one's got a lot more stuff than my, I, sorry, you guys, I haven't played with this. I should have, okay, you see that zoom stat? Slow down there, Sparky. You see that zoom stat right there? I'm going to go to zoom stat, and I'm going to hit enter, and watch what happens. Whoa, look at that. Wait, something looks a little funny there. M month one, month two, month three, month four, month five. Month five looks crazy. That should have been 47, which would put me up which would put me about there. So what do I do? I go back to my stat. I go to my edit. I got to go to seven. Oh, look at six. Six is, I put a five in there, which it shouldn't be. It should be a 53. I'm going to hit enter. Now all my defaults are already set, so I'm going to hit zoom, and I'm going to hit zoom. You know what? It's not, it's no longer faster. There are extra little applications that they threw on this thing. Zoom stat, or I could just remember that it's, it's zoom nine and hit enter, and look at that. Isn't that pretty? Okay, now let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Cool, I've got all my data points. And that looks pretty sinusoidal, doesn't it? It looks like a sign would go right through here. It would start here and curve down and go back. It, it's pretty, isn't it? So here's what we're going to do. Let's do a sinusoidal regression on this. In other words, I'm going to make it map a sine curve to this, and then we'll write down what it is, and I'm actually going to do this all in one fell swoop. You'll like the way this is done. Watch. I'm going to go to stat. I'm going to go to calc, and what I'm going to do is, you see these regressions? I know that you've played with these before in your Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, so if you haven't seen this before, come yell at me. I don't see anything that I like yet. You know what? I want sine, power, exponential, legit. Ooh, look, hey, hey, well, hush my mouth. So I just told it, sign. Well, it needs to know where to look. I happen to have put my data in L1 and L2, so I'm going to go L1, and then comma, which is always above the 7, and L2. Now I'm going to do something really fancy. I'm going to have it store it in my grapher. And the way that I do that, so when I go back here, I go to y equals, I'm going to have it stored right here because the regression equations on these are horrific. They're just god-awful things. So let's go second quit, and I'm going to cruise over here, and I'm going to tell it to stick it in y1. And the way I do that is I hit vars, and I go over to y vars, and go to function, and there's a y1 sitting right there. So I hit enter, and look at what I got. Now watch this. Watch this. It's, it's thinking, and voila, look at that. I have, apparently, the y, the sine function of best fit, which really minimizes the distance between the points in the curve, is y equals 15.74 sine of, and now you got to be careful here. Look at how it's written. It's not written as a factored form. You know what? I need more room than I'm giving myself right here. I'm going to write it down here. Is y equals... 
sine of b, which is 0 0.512, notice that I always try to round out to thousands at least, minus 2.050, I'll just leave it as 2.05, and then plus 40.168. However, the cool thing is, I don't have to, I don't have to write this in anything anywhere other than on my page, because look, it's already stored. Isn't that cool? Now, we're going to graph it. Let's go zoom 9 again. It'll be pretty. Zoom 9, and look at that. Isn't that cool? That's pretty cool. Bullseyes, lots of bullseyes. We did well. All right, so that's how to use your calculator to do a little regression analysis of a sinusoidal curve. We'll do a bunch of work on these in class. Um, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in class tomorrow. Bye-bye.